يهله الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار uh, last week we talk uh, about the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu an qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha khataba ihmarat aynah wa ala sawtuh wa ishtadda ghadabu hatta ka'annahu munzuru jaysh yaqulu sabbahakum wa masakum wa yaqulu bu'ithtu ana wa sa'atu kahatayn يقول بعثت انا والساعه كهاتين ويقرن بين اصبعيه السبابه والوسطى ويقول اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل بدعه ضلاله ثم يقول انا اولى بكل مؤمن من نفسه من ترك مالا فلاهله ومن ترك دينا او ضياعا فالي Uh, this hadith taught us how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to deliver the khutbah, and I guess we discussed that last week. How the khatib should be, what should be the focus in the khutbah, and uh, the importance of having that kind of sermon on Friday because usually uh, people who are not coming to the masjid but on Friday you will see them in the masjid. So it's the biggest gathering within a week that Allah SWT is bringing everyone to you as the khatib so that you can uh, fill them with something that will keep them awake until next week they come, they come back to you. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be very serious in that, in that manner. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be very serious in that manner. Jabir says when it, whenever he makes khutbah, his eyes will become red and the Prophet Sallallahu the voice, his voice will go up and And he will, I mean, looks like a person who is very angry. And as if the Prophet Sallallahu is about to tell people, I mean, he's trying to tell people that the enemy is at the door, is about to attack. Uh, and also from time to time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to remind them about the reality. The reality of them being here. I mean, what exactly are they supposed to do? And what exactly is the nature of their existence on earth in these days before they die? And he used to remind them about the Day of Judgment. Uh, Jabir says he used to say, He used to put his both fingers, the, the indexed one and the middle one, he used to put them all together and say, This is how Allah SWT sent me together with the Day of Judgment. So what, it means that the arrival of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. So if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that 1,400 years ago, so what do you think about now? So if he used to, I mean, urge and remind his companion to get ready for the Day of Judgment, what do you think about the people of these days? 1,400 years ago, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah SWT sent me together with the Day of Judgment. So for sure we are closer than those generation to the Day of Judgment, definitely. So if there is somebody who is, to suppo who is supposed to be prepared for that day, it should, be, it should be the people of these days. So the Day of Judgment, as you already know, it will come after seeing certain signs of the Day of Judgment, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned them. So it will never happen until we see these signs. The minor one already took place, or the vast majority of them, and we are still waiting for 
the major signs of the Day of Judgment. So any statement that will come from somebody that the Day of Judgment might happen on certain days, this is not only fake, and I don't, I don't have any classification for that actually. Because the best of the creation did not know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam amongst the human beings and Jibreel also did not know when it, when it will happen. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Thaqwalat fi samawati wal ard, la ta'atikum illa baghta. And it will just come like that. Nobody knows which Friday will be the, the day of judgment. But it will happen on Friday, but which Friday, we don't know. And when exactly it's going to happen, we don't know. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala set up certain signs. Whenever we see them, we should know that we are very near to the time. And you have around 10 of them mentioned by the Prophet Sallallahu arrival of the Mahdi, followed by Dajjal, Isa ibn Maryam to come and kill the Dajjal, and then Juju Majuj to come. You get it? Just like the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Alamatu Sa'a Kharazatum Manzumatum Fi Silk. He said these signs of the Day of Judgment, they are just like the bids. You know the Subha? You have the Subha, right? The one that people do Tasbih with it. If you take the Subha and you cut, what will happen? They will keep on, the first one will fall down and they will keep on following it. He said the sign of the Day of Judgment, they are like that. When the first one happens, the rest also they will keep on following as if they are pushing each other. That's why Mahdi comes, before he dies, Dajjal will come, before he dies, Isa will come, before he dies, yeah, Juju Ma Juju will come. Just like that. And then after that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a wind to take the life of the believers. And then after that, then the people will see the rising of the sun from, from the west. And then the tawbah will be closed. Nobody will repent at that moment. Either you're good or you're bad. A'udhu billah. Either you're good or you're bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يَأْتِي بَعْضُ آيَاتِ رَبِّكَ لَا يَنْفَعُ نَفْسًا إِيمَانُهَا لَمْ تَكُنْ آمَنَتْ مِنْ قَبْلُ أَوْ كَسَبَتْ فِي إِيمَانِهَا خَيْرًا the day some of the sign of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to arrive, which is the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, this is the rising of the sun from, from the west. Whoever did not believe before then, his iman will not benefit him. Khalas, the, the door to convert to Islam, to accept Islam is closed. The door to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also closed. So either you are in or you are out. So we start experiencing some of the nature of the Day of Judgment. And then this, this will happen in the morning, right? And then in the evening, the, the beast will come, the animal. Get it? This is the Dabba. Dabba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it will come. When it comes, you tell people what, what exactly is going to be their final destination, whether to paradise or hell. And then there will be a great earthquake from the Jazeera to Arab, one from this, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Bil Mashriq wal Maghrib, three earthquakes. Right, one from the west, one from the east, one from the Jazeera to Al Jazeera Arabia, Arabian Peninsula. And then after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the fire that will chase people to the Ard al Mahshar, the land of assembly. So these are the sign of Day of Judgment in which when they happened, when one of them happened, then uh, we should know that the Day of Judgment is very, is very near. That's why in some of them, the Prophet says, some of these signs, when they take place between people and the Day of Judgment, it's just like when you have a camel or when you have a horse and this horse give a birth, give birth of a child, of a kid. Before you are able to utilize the kid, I mean the kid be ready so that somebody can ride it, the Day of Judgment will happen. So we are talking about a few years. Get it? We're talking about a few years. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and protection. So definitely we need to get ready for that because we're not here to stay. We're here to move to the second life. Whoever understands this will succeed in this life. If you don't get it properly, you will lose. If you get busy accumulating life, accumulating wealth, doing everything in the way it comes without remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold you accountable of that. Wallahi, you are definitely in trouble. So all that you have to do is to remember that this place is not the place to stay. It's a place of what? Plantation. You plant, you're going to harvest, you're going to cultivate your plantation in the future. What is the future? That's the day of judgment based in light time. So that's what the Prophet ﷺ usually remind them when he gives the khutbah. It's hard to find the Prophet ﷺ giving khutbah without bringing these reminders, right? Because people have to understand that we are not here to stay. I mean, if you look at the vast majority of us, and how many people remember Allah every single, single moment of their life? 
How many people among us remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever they transact? How many people rem remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they practice the religious rituals? Only few. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those few who are sincere in whatever they do and who are maintaining the real muraqabah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout their life. Qala wa yaqulu amma ba'du fa inna khair al-hadithi kitabullah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say to them amma ba'du is a mabad is a word that they bring it to show that the muqaddimah introduction is finished and now we are going to begin with the main issue with the main topic laqad alim al hayyul yamanuna annani idha qultu amma ba'd anni khatibu this is uh, one of the poetry taken from uh, the old arab society so this is the word that the arab uh, arabs they used to use it to show that the introduction is finished and now we are beginning beginning with the main and the most important issue that brought us here. So the Prophet used to say, Amma ba'du fa inna khayr al hadithi kitabullah. The best of hadith, conversation, statement, uh, sayings, you get it? Statement, sayings is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you Allah. There is nothing better than the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No hadith that is more than the hadith with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You got it, those people who memorize Quran and they enjoy reading it, they will tell you that. Imam Shatabi says, وَخَيْرُ جَلِيسٍ لَا يُمَلُّ حَدِيثُهُ وَتَرْدَادُهُ يَزْدَادُ فِيهِ تَجَمُّلًا The best jalis. Jalis is what? Somebody who sits with you to give you comfort. Wallahi, there is nothing better than the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will tell you if you go and approach those people who enjoy reading the Quran. The best of Julasa is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this life, the best jalis. In the hereafter, the best jalis also. La yumallu hadithuhu. And it's the only jalis. I mean, your brother will talk to you and you get bored. You tell him, Aida. Your friend also will talk to you. Sometimes you don't like the statement. Your parents also, they might be talking to you just because they are parent and you have to respect them. You accept anything. But they don't want to listen. Your wife can talk to you, tell her, keep quiet. All of these things can happen, but it will never happen with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever has iman, when he reads Quran, Wallah, I'm telling you, if you have sincerity, the enjoyment you have, you will never get it somewhere else. You will never get bored of conversing with the Quran. The more people talk, the less interest you're going to have in their statement. You get it? People don't like talking too much. But Quran is not like that. The more you read, the more interest you have. More interest comes if you read it more. That's why you see in the Ramadan, we have programs, tafsir program. Next Ramadan comes the same surah, tafsir. And people are coming and they enjoy it. Next Ramadan comes, the same. And also, try and monitor the speaker. Especially if he's among those qualified people. This year, he said something. Go to the next year when he teaches the same place, he's going to give you different things. That's Quran. And so one of the righteous predecessors, when he was reading Quran in jail, he said, Wallahi, those people who make me busy are with them, they definitely cheated me in, the, in, in my life. He said, I never knew that Quran is like that. He said, every day when he read, he's extracting new things which never came across his brain at all. So this is Quran. Khairu Jalisin. So the Prophet used to say, Khairul Hadithi, uh, Khairul Hadithi Kitabullah. The best of conversation statements is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It contains everything you need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim. Thalik al Kitabu la Rayba Fih. They said somebody converted to Islam because of this. One of the brothers was telling me that somebody converted to Islam because of this part. You know how it guided him to Islam? Because he says, whenever we write a book, no matter how much strong you are, you are a professor, whatever professorship you have, but if you're honest to yourself, when you write a book or an article, at the end, you will say, well, this is human effort. It's capable of, I mean, being mistake. 
I mean, you can find mistakes in it and errors. And please, you the readers, whenever you find some mistake, fix it or do let me know about the mistake. I will fix it myself. So others are like that. But then he comes across a book. And then the one who sent down the book says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ do you get an idea? He said, this is the book. It means the real book, which carries no doubt, no mistake, no fault, no error. You get it? No doubt in it. This is the most perfect book. So that drag his interest to see what kind of book is that? That the author says, there is no mistake in it. Usually the authors, they will say, please, there is a, I'm a human being. Definitely you're going to find some errors in it. Check and see. But this one says, no mistake in it. And wallahi, it is like that. Quran carries no mistake. And why is it like that? Because it comes from somebody who knows no mistakes. Who does not make a mistake. Allah says, رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فَعَبُدُهُ وَالصَّبِرْ لِعْبَادَتِهِ هَلْ تَعْلَمُ لَهُ سَمِيَّةِ He says, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ نَسِيَّةِ Allah SWT will never forget. And Allah SWT is the most high and the all-knowing. He knows everything. So whatever is said by Allah SWT will be the ultimate truth and there is no truth. You get it? There is no truth apart from that. So whatever you're looking for, you get it from the book of Allah SWT, either directly or indirectly. Either directly or indirectly. So it's the ultimate guidance. Allah SWT said, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ الْعَرَيْبَ فِي هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ it's a guidance for the, for the believers. It's guidance for all of the humankind. But the believers are specified here because they are the most one who are benefiting from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get it? It's a guidance for everyone. Up to this moment also, non-Muslims also, some of them who are honest with, uh, for themselves, they take benefit from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand this uh, issue properly so that we will hold the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way it should be done. Qala khayr al-hadithi kitabullah wa khayr al-hadi hadiyu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the best of the books is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best of a statement after the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those that are coming from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the sunnah. Allah says, wa anzalna ilayka dhikra we have sent down to you a dhikr. What is dhikr here? Sunnah of the Prophet. So that you can explain to the people that which has been revealed to them. The Prophet said, You should pay attention and listen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me Quran and something similar to that. So brothers and sisters, whatever you're looking for, the solution is in the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Read the book of hadith. Have interest in reading hadith. You will understand what I'm telling you. In some cases, just because the hadith is authentic, otherwise you won't believe in that. Nothing was neglected by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Allah says, ma farratana fil kitabi min shay. Nothing is neglected in this religion. Whether you take it as lawful mahfuz or you take it as the book given to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but Quran did not neglect anything. It talks about everything, either directly or indirectly, through the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah says, "Wa into the yuhu, So make the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the the safina. You get it? That's why one of the scholars said. The Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is like Safina to Nuh, the ship of Nuh alayhi salam. Man rakibaha naja. Whoever rides it will pass the test and succeed, will be saved, and whoever stays away from it will be destroyed, will sink. And Wallahi, that's the truth. It's a statement attributed to Abdullah ibn Mubarak, but it's the ultimate truth. The Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is nothing but like the ship which was used by Noah. You know, only those people who are with him succeeded and passed the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever was not with him get destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including his family members 
who refuse to follow him. Kala wa khairul hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharral umuri muhdathatuha. And also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I used to tell them, sharral umuri muhdathatuha. The worst of affairs, they are the innovative ones. And we already talked about innovation is to introduce something to the religion of Allah SWT, which is not part of it. It means whatever you do in this religion, you must get something to back it up. Otherwise, you have to face question in the hereafter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is his religion. Right. Why is it worse? The wars of affairs are the innovative matters. Why is that? Because innovation cannot exist unless if you remove the established one. Innovation cannot exist unless if you remove the sunnah of the Prophet Because Allah says, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيْتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ Allah SWT says, this day I have completed for you your religion. And I have perfected for you my favor. And I have chosen for you Islam to be your religion. So he said, the religion is complete. And when something gets completed, cannot accept any increase. That's why always I say, it's just like a cup of water, you make it full. If you put another one, you get the old one is going to go out so that we can have some space for the new one. The new ones will never have a space if you don't make a space for them. So how am I going to make it a space? I will remove the old one. And the old one is the real thing that last matter wants people to do. So you can see that. The reason why the Prophet ﷺ called it Sharr al-Umuri Muhdithatuha and he used to say, وَكُلُّ بِلْأَتٍ ضَلَالًا and every innovation, every innovation is falsehood. You get it? Every innovation is falsehood, the Prophet says, without segregation. As long as there is nothing to back it out from the Sunnah of the Prophet, that means Allah did not ask you to do that. So the Prophet said, He will be dalala, he will be falsehood. من ترك مالا فلأهله and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to tell them that I am the best to be the wali of every Muslim the best of awliya I mean the best of the awliya of every Muslim I mean the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam belongs to every one of us more than the way we belong to our parents that's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then he would tell them من ترك مالا فلأهله Whoever leaves wealth, fali ahlihi. This wealth should be taken to his family members. That's the inheritance. Get it? Whoever leaves something, it should be taken to the family members. That's the estate. Get it? It should be distributed in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified. Very interesting knowledge. Very excellent knowledge. You get it? Uh, knowledge of inheritance. Because of its importance and also its sensitivity, Allah SWT took the responsibility of distributing the estate by himself. And you know, it was so amazing to find out that almost everything about inheritance is mentioned by Allah SWT in three to four ayats. That's it. In three to four ayats. The amount of the hadith that talks about inheritance, they're very little. Almost everything is discussed by Allah SWT. Look at how accurate is the book of Allah. Three ayats. You put them in uh, two, they will not even reach two and a half pages. Let's say three pages. The whole issues about inheritance, the scholars instructed them from that. May Allah want to grant us success. But as I said, it's a very important knowledge that I really urge you guys to be familiar with it. You get it to go and study and master the thing because up to date and until the day of judgment we are facing problems concerning that matter. Families are this. I mean, becoming disintegrated, people are losing their life because of inheritance. Okay, a lot of injustice is going. So that's why Allah SWT does it by himself, to show to the people that he is aware. And he closed those ayat of inheritance with three warnings. The first one Allah SWT says in the first ayat, he says, آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ لَا تَدْرُونَ أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ لَكُمْ نَفَعًا فَرِيدَةً مِنَ اللَّهِ Your parent, you get it? Your parents and your children, you don't know which one is more beneficial to you. What does that mean? Keep it in the way Allah SWT kept it. Don't interfere. Just distribute it like this. And this is a fixed point.
portion given to each and every one of them and this is the, how it's supposed to be distributed and nobody should go against in the second ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says tilka hududullah after he distributes the portions of the wife and the husband and those uterine siblings and those kalala and those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in that long ayah and then he says what these are the boundaries and the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set up whereby nobody is allowed to go beyond them and whoever goes beyond that Allah says he will take him to hell you can see how serious is the matter and in the last ayah in Surah An-Nisa when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about kalala also and look at how beautiful is that some people came and asked the Prophet about Kalala. Kalala is somebody who dies, he doesn't have up and he doesn't have down. Don't understand it literally, right? A person is born without head and legs. No, it doesn't mean that. It, doesn't mean, it means no roots and no descendants. But he has siblings, right? This is Kalala. No roots, no descendants, but he has siblings. Somebody asked the Prophet Allah says, Yes, taftunaka kulillahu if you can feel kalala. They're asking you fatwa, tell them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them the fatwa. You know, they ask the Prophet, but Allah interferes to show to the people that this is a very serious matter. And Allah is watching what exactly is going on. You get it? At the last part of this ayah, Allah says, Yubayinullahu lakum antadillu. These are explanations by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you so that you will not go astray. What does that mean? Not doing it in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants is what is equal to going, going astray. So I really urge you to master that discipline. Inshallah, it needs from you only a year if you're a student, see the student, peace Allah ta'ala to get it, to get it done. So the Prophet said, Inna Allah kad a'ta kulli di haqqin haqqahu fala li So whoever leaves wealth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distribute the wealth to those people who are supposed to inherit, to inherit that, that person. Wa man and whoever leaves whoever leaves alone he borrowed money from somebody the Prophet said I will be responsible of that and he left his children he says I will be if there is nobody to take care of them he says I will be responsible of that some scholars said this is the last decision. The first one was not like that. The first one was the one that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to stay away from praying upon anyone who died while he still owed people money. And at this position I will take opportunity also to advise my brothers and sisters to be very careful. Stay away from loans. Don't borrow money from others, unless if it is really necessary. Don't borrow money from others, unless if it is really necessary. Because this is one of the issues that Allah SWT will never forgive. Because it is connected to the right of others. And you have to pay whatever you, you owe people on the Day of Judgment. Somebody asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Shaheed, is he going to be tested in the grave? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no test for him. And Allah SWT will forgive all of his sins with the first drop of blood that is going to hit the ground. And he mentioned all of those virtues that are given to the Shaheed. So the man was so impressed, he left. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him back. He told him, illa dain, except loan, qart the debt you owe people. He said, Sarrani bihi Jibreel Arifan. Imagine something which is so serious in such a way, Allah SWT will send Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet SAW to make a correction. From the heavens he will send him just to make this correction. That not everything is going to be closed. Debt is not going to be forgiven. That's why when they bring a person to the Prophet SAW, he will first ask, did he leave money? They say yes or no. Did he borrow money from people? Did he owe people money? If they say yes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will ask, did he pay that? No. Did he leave something that can pay the, the debt? If they say no, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will refrain from praying to him. So they brought one person 
and he owed people a few amount of ringgit, you can say, I mean, darahim. The Prophet Sallallahu asked, did he borrow money from people? They said no. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi prayed for him. They bring another one. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and he owed people money. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, uh, asked the people who brought him, did he owe people money? They say yes. Did he leave something to pay that? They say yes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed for him. They brought another one one day. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, did he owe people money? They say yes. Did he leave something to pay the debt? They said, no, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sallu ala sahibikum. You pray for your brother, the janazah. What does that mean? I will not pray for him. He said, you just go and pray for him. But I will not. One of the companions called Abu Qatada, he looked at how great and how bad is the situation that somebody is going to lose the prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because you remember in the hadith of that uh, sister who died, who used to cannot taqumul masjid, who used to clean the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? When she died, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Please, after she died, don't you ever bury her before you let me know." So the woman died. They just look at her. This is just a slave. I mean, she's not that important. Her job is just clean the masjid. So when she died at night. They went and they buried her. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them. He said, when he heard about the issue, I mean, he missed her in the masjid. She doesn't come to clean the masjid. So he asked, "What about this woman? What happened to her?" He said, "Ya Rasulullah, she passed away." Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got angry with them. He said, "Didn't I tell you you should you should tell me when she died? Because she was sick when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was talking to them." He said, "Please, if this woman happened to die, do let me know before you bury her." So they went and they buried her. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked them and he told him that she already passed away and we buried her. He said, "Why did he do that?" He said, "Ya Rasulullah, because she died at night. We found it so difficult and we think it's so bad to wake her up. We just do the job and took her to the graveyard." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam I said, "No, show me the place." And he, they took him to the grave. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prayed for her and then he says, "You guys should know that these graves they are full of darkness." You get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making it so dark for the people who are inside. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite mercy is giving the people of the grave light if I pray for them. They will get the light. So you can see how much this person is going to lose. This light of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He might get it from somewhere else but this is the shortest way to get it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to pray for you. So Abu Qatada said, Ya Rasulullah, salli alayhi. He said, Ya Rasulullah, because of these three dirhams, he's going to lose your prayer. He said, Ya Rasulullah, please pray for him. And I'm responsible to pay the debt. The Prophet wasallam said, you're responsible. He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. You're responsible. Yes, Ya Rasulullah. Okay. Then the Prophet wasallam Abu Qatada says, Every day when I meet the Prophet Sallallahu not every day, whenever I meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi the first question is, Ya Aba Qatada, did you manage to pay the debt? And then I tell him, no, Ya Rasulullah. And then he keeps quiet. After a few hours, if we meet again, Ya Aba Qatada, did you manage to pay the debt? And then I will tell him, no, Ya Rasulullah. Until after a few days, he managed to settle the case. He met the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him the question as usual. He said, "Ya Abu Qatada, did you manage to pay the debt?" He said, "Yes, Ya Rasulullah." And then listen to what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. He said, "Al-ana baradat jiddatu." Only now the skin of that person become cool. So here the scholars argues a lot. Is he punished because if he says something become, become is becoming cool? What does that mean? He's in a heart area the temperature where he was is quite high but now he's getting the, the ease and the coolness so when the prophet said some scholars said he is punished because of that but then other scholars said no Allah SWT says La taziru waziratun wazira ukhra. and also uh, Allah SWT says Laysa lil insan illa masa. if you said he is, he is punished they said what did he do that was not his fault because he was intending to pay the debt but then the debt comes and 
death comes and, uh, and snatch him. The man was trying to pay the debt, but unfortunately death comes. That was not his fault. You get it? If it was based, based, based on his fault, then we can understand, but that was not his fault. He is punished on what base? Then these scholars said, no, he is not punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the closest opinion, Wallahu alam, is the one that says, Nafsul mu'min marhunatun bidaynihi. The soul of a believer is under a rahm bidaynihi. You know rahm? Rahm is, uh, is a pledge. When I want to borrow money from you, if you don't trust me, you will ask me to provide a security, to give you something to keep it with you in case there might be failure to settle the debt in the future. You can sell this one and pay the debt and take your money from it. Or at least you can report to the court and the judge can sell it and give you back your money. That's rahan. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to keep the soul of a believer as rahan, what does that mean? It means the believer after the test in the grave, even though he passed the test, he cannot enter his paradise until the time somebody pays the debt. So you can see how serious is the matter. That's why I really advise you, don't borrow money from anyone. Unless if it is necessary. And when it is necessary, have good intention in that. First, the intention should be, I borrow it with the intention of paying it. And ask Allah SWT to help you. And try make the payment as soon as you get something to pay. And also, write it down. If you have a wife, pass it to her. You don't have one, pass it to your parent. Keep it in a place where people can see it right after your death. Because what is supposed to happen is, right after you pass away, if it is possible before people take you to the grave, they should settle the debt first. And then they take you to the grave. You can go and relax. But if they don't, you'll be kept there. Although you pass the death, the test, but you can't go, you cannot go to your house. That will be a psychological punishment for you. Seeing your house, but you can't enter the house. And how long is it going, is it going to be? Allahu alam. To get an idea. So it's very important. Allah says that you have amanu ida tadayantum bidainin ila ajalim musamman faktubu. He says, Wala tasamu an taktubuhu sagiran aw kabiran ila ajal. If I don't write the debt, my wife doesn't know. I pass away, I die. Who knows about it? People will take the, the estate and distribute among themselves. And that was right because they don't know anything about my debt. But if I keep it down, then Allah knows. They have to settle this first and then they can distribute the balance. If there is any balance. So always remember this, my brothers and sisters. Understand your limitation. Don't borrow money from others because Allah SWT will never close the case. And whatever you take from people, try to take it back. And sometimes also, this is my personal advice to you. Sometimes I take money from my friends, the one that is working with me. Small amount of money. But then I forgot and he forgot. But remember, Allah SWT will never forget. And he will remind him on the Day of Judgment. Also. And he will come and look for his right. There was no friendship on that day. When it comes to forgiveness, he will never forgive. Here he can say he forgives, but in the hereafter, Allah will remind him and he will look for his right. What does that mean? No matter how much small it is, write it down. And as soon as you get the money, pay it back. That's better for you. Be in light ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man taraka daynan, awdaya'an fa ilayya awaliyya. So what shall we do if somebody dies? We first take the funeral expenses and then we settle the debts. If his money is capable of settling the debt, you get it, then it's okay. If we cannot do that, we pay whatever we can pay. You get it? And then who is supposed to pay the rest? Who is supposed to pay the rest? The leader of the believers. If there is something to pay those debt, if they don't have any affairs, this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. Baytul Mal al Muslimin should settle the affairs. If that can afford. If they cannot afford it, then they should be busy with some other affairs. Allah SWT will settle the debt on the day of judgment from his favor if his intention is to pay the debt. 
You remember I kept on saying you should have intention to pay it back, right? It is very important for you to be upon this manner. Because if, let's say, you die before you pay the debt, what will happen? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man akhada amwal al-nasi yuridu ada'aha addallahu anhu. If you take the wealth of others, you take the money of others with the intention of paying it back, but then you die before you pay it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pay on your behalf on the day of judgment. From where? Not from your reward. Do you get an idea? But if you don't have intention to pay, in this life there will be a heavy punishment which is to destroy you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And in the hereafter, Allah will pay from, from your rewards. Question, how much reward you think is equivalent or is enough to pay one cent that you borrow from others? Do you have an idea? Nobody has an idea. And believe it or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who knows. It might be the payment of that ringgit you borrow from your brother and your sister which you did not pay intentionally. It might be the payment of that, all of your righteous deeds. What can you say? You can't say nothing. Because the one who will evaluate is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows and you don't know. That's why the Prophet said, Man kanat li akhihi alayhi mazlamatun falaytahallalhu min malin awraid falaytahallalhu min hulya. If you have any right of your brother over you, whether this right happened to be money you took from him, or his honor that you, you touch, you backbite him, you lie against him. You do all of these evil attitudes that some of us are doing nowadays. The Prophet said, settle the case today. Before the day where there is no ringgit and no dirham, no riya exist. hasanat. Allah SWT is going to be dealing with the hasanat. They will take from your righteous deed and pay the debt. Your righteous deed and pay this one. Your righteous deed and pay this one. And if that person lacks more righteous deed to pay that restitution he owes others, then Allah SWT is going to take from their evil deed and cast on him. And this is the real bankrupt the Prophet said. And then he will be taken to hell. Waliyadu billah. So that's all for today, insha'Allah. Next week we will begin with a new chapter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you success in life. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashara la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah wa tuhibi alayhi.